All right, so back to the topic about uh, temp meters, temp ropes, and temp measurement overall. So uh, yesterday, so now it's the uh, now it's the Easter weekend, and uh, yesterday I went out and I got quite a large amount of LN2. So I have some over here in this uh, 1.2 liter thermos flask over here. So it's just a clear liquid, as you can see, boils almost like water. So let's see how different type probes and meters react when you put the probe into the uh, into liquid nitrogen and see like how much the uh, quality can actually differ between different probes so uh, we can pretty much use I have uh, some uh, different type probes here so we have the uh, uh, fluke branded ones that came with the uh, 51 uh, 52 2 meter then some really weird I'm, I'm, I have no idea what kind of quality K-type probe. This is uh, this. I have had this for many many years. And then we have these really good KP uh, Kimpin ones, which you can buy from KimpinCooling.com. I really recommend you get these big ones for uh, CPU and GPU containers, where you need the best possible temperature control and accuracy and response time. You still need these smaller ones, as I said, when you uh, do like memory overclocking. 775 for similar old platform uh, Northbridge overclocking like those really small Northbridge pots you can't really use a big meter I mean big probe like this to uh, monitor the temperature from small pot like that you should bin some of these smaller ones yourself to find good enough probe for that kind of situation so just saying so let's try the uh, Fluke branded one first, so just have to put it the correct way around. So T1, and look how fast the whole thing is when we dip this into LN2. But I'm not sure how well it should read or what exact value. My altitude from sea level is like around 150 meters or 140 meters above sea level. So uh, at sea level, so we're at normal atmospheric. Air pressure, liquid nitrogen boils at minus 195.8 degrees Celsius. So I think the correct value here should be very close to that, like 0.9 or minus 196.0. If you took a big LN2 doer field on top of Mount Everest, at the uh, atmospheric air pressure is much lower at uh, 8 kilometers plus altitude. So there the LN2 LN should read colder than minus 200, around like minus 200 or a bit colder than minus 200. So it depends a little bit. So let's try. See, it's not good at all. So it's it went colder than minus 200 because it doesn't read. I'm not sure if it's the thing is on the meter itself or just in the probe. So let's try with the uh, let's try with the Kimpin one. So now now it's the uh, Kimpin cooling probe instead. See, this is already much better. So the fluke branded one that came included with the uh, uh, meter read colder than minus 200 and 200 is the max this meter can read with a k-type probe because k-type isn't meant for cryogenic temperatures by default for uh, ln2 and other very cold liquids you should use the uh, t-type which can go down to minus 250 so if you had liquid hydrogen although it's very very dangerous or liquid helium there you need the t-type so uh, this kimping cooling one minus 191.2 so it's quite good. And let's try the same probe now with different meters. So how they differ. Because I have tested these before and it should read a bit better with the uh, even with the fluke one. So let's try the 10 mass now. So now it's the uh, 10 mass. It's quite the same, but it reads a little bit closer. So minus 
So it's like two, one to two degrees better actually. So the accuracy on this unit is actually quite good, if you ask me. It's not as responsive as the Fluke, but uh, it's already this meter is really really good for the price. What I already told you previously in the uh, uh, Fluke 52.2 uh, unboxing and overview video. So it's like one degree one degree off from the Fluke right now. And let's try the, uh, well, which I would consider to be the worst of the lot. So let's try the uh, Voltcraft K102. It's not the cheapest from the lot, but I like it the least. Well, just my personal opinion, this, one, this that comment. So... quite small the numbers and uh, it's not so responsive compared to the two other meters but it reads roughly the same as uh, the other two meters but it's well so far it le it reads the uh, least uh, well, the accuracy is the worst right now so the best one was actually 10 mass in terms of accuracy with this probe then the fluke and then this one so let's try the uh, very bul uh, bulky meter now but anyways, so even this is very very good. Of course the spot on would be close to minus 196. But even the uh, when you read around minus 192 it's already very very good. So let's try the very cheap looking one. I don't, re I don't have any idea where I originally got this probe. Let's try, so it's very like you could consider this random K-type probe from eBay. Like pretty much. Let's see how well it does. And it does really well. So minus 193. It does better than Kim Pim Probe. The, you saw how fast the meter was in terms of responsiveness. But this probe is actually very very good. So you could use this probe completely fine for uh, memory heat sinks, snow fridge pots and so on. And I think it's pretty much the same on the other two meters. So if we quickly try in 10 mass minus 193.2, it actually read minus 194. So minus 193.2, so quite the same. So it's actually very, very good. This probe, I have to keep this at hand for later use. And just out of interest, let's try the other included uh, K type probe from Fluke. If it's as bad as the other one, then you can see that it's not really good for uh, LN2 use when you want to use, when you want to measure cryogenic temperatures, it's not good at all. So here's the second one. To be honest, I never saw people using these fluke branded ones for LN2 overclocking so maybe it's because of that so it doesn't really seem that good I don't have any T-type probe at hand over here it's the same thing so it reads colder than minus 200 it reads way too cold Minus zero happens when you go below minus 200. So it's either zero zero or just lines, like minus lines. So these, these fluke printed ones aren't good at all for my use. So you can see it's not really about brand. You could, cons you could consider fluke branded K-type probes to be very efficient and really good in terms of accuracy and response in response time or responsiveness. But they really, they are really bad for LN2 overclocking. If they read like minus 205 degrees Celsius at normal atmospheric air pressure when dipped in LN2, it's not very it's not very very good at all. Okay, so I found two other probes. These green ones were always really really bad. I had a few of them. I bought them off eBay or AliExpress and I never used any for LN2. So let's see just for just purely out of interest. So with the fluke, it can be any of these meters really. See, that's what I meant. Minus 
174 like of 3.9 so here's the complete opposite what we saw with the fluke branded probes so this reads way too warm temperature so it's not really good at all so it's 20 around 22 degrees off from what would be 100% accurate value yeah, at my altitude so so don't use any of these let's try quickly the other one as well that's already quite good mine's one hundred and half point six yeah this is already quite good but the yellow one was the best of these all it's quite quite interesting wait let's try let's try quickly the worst one of the lot, so the green one with 10 watts. Like, is there really that much difference between meters themselves? Not really. Mine's 174.5. Roughly the same result what we got with Fluke. And lastly, the world craft minus 173.2 some some small differences here and there but so far accuracy wise the fault with the world craft seems to be the worst of the lot but really the 10 mass is really spot on in terms of accuracy with the fluke so the only real difference between the fluke compared to the 10 mass one is the bigger size so you have the larger footprint you have the nice uh, stand for the fluke so you don't have to always look from directly from above the meter to see the value like properly and you have the larger display so easier to see the values and just a faster response time but for the price this 10 mars this 10 mars tm 82n is really really good meter i would recommend any like i would recommend this meter to anyone who is just starting like all the youngsters out there who want to try dry ice single stage or similar for the first time ever get that probe i mean definitely get that meter and uh, some nice probe to go along with it to actually let's try one one last thing with 10 mass because 10 mass usually can run you 10 mass meter can read colder than minus 200 compared to two compared to the other two meters of this lot so now fluke branded k-type probe on uh, the 10 mass meter See, that's completely, that's really, really bad. Mine's 207, roughly. So that's really, really bad result from Fluke. And yeah, as we see, 10 masks can definitely read colder than minus 200. So in that regard, it's better than any of these other meters. So you could use the 10 mask meter for liquid helium, even with K-type probe. You can't use any, either of these two meters for liquid helium if you just run k-type probe so uh, that's a very nice result for the 10 mass meter and let's produce the same result with the volt craft as with the uh, uh, fluke meter because what the volt craft meters also stop at minus 200 they don't go below the uh, paper value see just lines so same result as uh, the zero zero on the fluke. Then just quickly the one last test with the uh, other probe with the ten mass meter. See if this is even worse. Minus 210 degrees Celsius. It's really, really bad result. Ah, oh, come on. I wouldn't call this fluke quality by any means, really. This is really, really bad result. So, yeah. That's the end result for today. So, I hope you got the idea now. So, you cannot really trust even a known brand when it comes to uh, temperature measurement accuracy and response time. What we could 
produce now with the Fluke Barnet K-type ropes. So even if they come along included with a very high, with very high end and expensive thermometer like the Fluke 522 II, there's no guarantee that it will that it will be very spot on and fast in every situation like high temperatures or very low temperatures. When it comes to measuring cryogenic temperatures, it's uh, really bad among the uh, very cheapish uh, K-type probe I found from eBay, so the green one. So the difference between the two is that the green one, the green uh, very bulky K-type probe measures way too hot temperature or way too warm, so it measured only uh, minus 174, so it's, two so it's 22 degrees off from the spot-on temperature roughly and uh, the uh, Fluke branded ones measure way too cold temperature, so minus 207 and minus 210 degrees Celsius, so it's uh, like 11 to 14 degrees too cold. We are not we are not on top of Mount Everest, there it could be quite close to the accurate, but here at relatively normal atmospheric air pressure it should read around minus 196. So uh, what you should... what what I would conclude with this video, then really, if you are just starting, get the 10 mass TM82N meter. And even for experienced guys, this meter is really, really good, as it works even for li liquid helium with K-type probe. Of course, it's somewhere, of course, running liquid helium is so expensive, so you can easily afford a, an expensive meter like that if you already have the ability to run liquid helium and use T-type probe for that purpose but anyways so accuracy wise the 10 mass is really i mean really spot on with the fluke voltcraft was first was the worst one of these three meters and uh, of course the uh, the overall like usability goes better when you go uh, like uh, when you go from the voltcraft all the way to the 10 mass so the I mean to the Fluke one, because the 10 mass already has a bit larger display than the Worldcraft one. Both of the inputs are quite easy to read. And uh, the Fluke one has the stand, large display, good backlight and so on. So, and the best response time of all of these meters. But th the main difference is, this costs 60 euros with shipping. This costs like 300 or 400 euros with shipping. So that price difference is so huge that it's very hard it's very hard to uh, base the need of that extra money on the fluke when you can get the same end result with the 10 mass meter. But the, mo the most difference comes from the actual probes. So the, uh, the temperature readings were pretty much the same on all of the three meters when we used the same probe. So my personal advice is to get a really like uh, reliable and very uh, responsive K-type probe for your main containers like CPU pot, graphics card pot, where the temperature measurement is the, the most constant and you want to maintain a steady temperature, get something like the Kimping cooling one over here for those. And then just bin the smaller ones yourself if you ever want to run memory or north bridge on LN2 or something small in general because the hole is too small for the Kimping cooling one. And because the Kimping cooling one is so hard to bend, it's way too hard to get them properly attached to uh, memory heat sinks. When you run memory properly on LN2, you want to measure the temperature directly from the memory stick or the heat sink itself, not from the pot, because there sometimes might be radical differences in temperature between the two individual sticks. I saw this many times, and uh, in that case, the other stick was running like minus, 100, minus 180, and the other stick was only at minus 110. And I realized this difference when I started measuring the temperature from the actual sticks, not from the pot. So I could fix the uh, pot mounting issue that way. And then I got a lot better end result. So uh, get both type, get both type uh, probes. So the large, large Kimping cooling ones for CPU and graphics card and small ones for memory. That's my overall conclusion. But I, and this is this was really nice test. So really bad result from the fluke branded ones. I will probably just throw them in a trash bin, and that's pretty much the end of this video. So if you like to see this short temp temperature meter, 
10 probe and overall 10 measurement video, then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next one.